Good evening, and thank you for joining us for our Monday Thursday service. This is the service of Word and Sacrament and Tenebrae for Thursday, March 28th, 2024. Our silent meditation, well, it comes from me. Jesus' friends could have fallen asleep a hundred times while he agonized in prayer, but he still would have gone to the cross to die for them, to save them and us. Indeed, he would. For announcements this evening, um, mainly our upcoming Easter Sunday services for Sunday, March 31st. There will be a 6 a.m. sunrise service at the Crum Pavilion in Carsonville. And as I mentioned before, if you're interested in joining us for that, let me know and I'll get you directions for that. At 8 a.m., we will have a church service for Easter at Salem UCC in Elizabethville. And at 10 a.m., we'll have a church service at St. Paul's UCC in Sacramento. <clears throat> I think those are the most salient announcements for right now. So let's begin our service. On this spring night, as darkness falls, we gather to remember the events of that evening when Jesus shared his last supper with his friends. And we read from Psalm 31. In you, O Lord, I seek refuge. Do not let me ever be put to shame. In your righteousness, deliver me. Incline your ear to me. Rescue me speedily. Be a rock of refuge for me, a strong fortress to save me. You are indeed my rock and my fortress. For your name's sake, lead me and guide me. Take me out of the net that is hidden for me, for you are my refuge. My times are in your hand. Deliver me from the hand of my enemies and persecutors. Let your face shine upon your servant. Save me in your steadfast love. And join me in the spirit of prayer for our prayer of invocation. Holy God, we are caught in the tension of light and shadow, death and resurrection. You spoke the world into being. You illuminated the universe by your very speech, then filled the void with life. Indeed, you have filled the void of darkness and death, the empty promises of the abyss, with new life and new creation. We look to you in the space between the world and your kingdom, longing for the fulfillment of your word in the work of the Holy Spirit and the reign of Christ, our Creator and King. Amen. We read this evening from the Gospel of John in chapter 13. Now before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. <clears throat> Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already decided that Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, would betray Jesus. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he had come from God and was going to God, he got up from supper, took off his outer robe, and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, "Lord, are you going to uh, excuse me, Lord, are you going to wash my feet?" Jesus answered, "You do not know now what I am doing, but later you will understand." Peter said to him, "You will never wash my feet." Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, One who has bathed does not need to wash, except for the feet, but is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you. For he knew who was to betray him. For this reason he had said, 
not all of you are clean. After he had washed their feet, had put on his robe, and had reclined again, he said to them, Do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example, that you also should do as I have done to you. Very truly I tell you, slaves are not greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. Jesus said, Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself, and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. Here end our readings for this evening. The German pastor Dietrich Bonhoeffer criticized the church as a whole for what he called cheap grace, meaning that we take Christ's sacrifice for granted and we make little effort to live up to his commands and way of self-giving life. Yes, we are saved, but we are also called to give ourselves away in love, just as Jesus did. So let us join in our prayer of confession. Forgive us, Lord, for forgetting your sacrifice and for thinking that your grace is cheap. Forgive us, Lord, for using the cross as a trinket, forgetting the agony it represents. Forgive us, Lord, for taking our worship for granted, forgetting the struggle that has assured its freedom. Forgive us, Lord, for being calloused to human cruelty, forgetting that every victim is a creature of God. Forgive us, Lord, for being nonchalant about injustice, forgetting that it still nails innocence to the cross. Forgive us, Lord, for thinking that sacrifice is obsolete, forgetting that we still contend against the powers of darkness. Receive our prayers, offered in all humility, as we remember and honor Christ our Lord, who prays for us still. Amen. Let us pause to reflect on these words, and for silent examination of conscience. Now here is the good news. Yes, we are forgiven. And yes, we are saved, thanks be to God. But we also are called to love one another just as Jesus did. The order of the service is a little different tonight. So we come now to the invitation to the offering. So let us bring our offerings to the one who satisfies our hunger with the bread of life and who quenches our thirst with the cup of salvation. Let us offer ourselves and our gifts in loving service that we may fulfill Christ's law of love. And we join in saying our offertory response. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise him, all creatures here below. Praise him above, ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. 
source of all love and compassion, you fill us with a deep spiritual longing to taste the cup of salvation and to know the joy of servant ministry. We offer you our very selves and the gifts that we bring before you now, that we may fulfill your law of love and be a blessing in our world. Amen. And let us pray using the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. We come now to the time of Holy Communion. If you haven't had an opportunity to have your elements ready, bread or a cracker, wine or grape juice, then pause the video. We'll be here for you. Let us continue. It would not have been God's table if they hadn't all been gathered around it. The betrayer and the friend, the power-hungry and the justice seeker, the faithful and the fickle. When Jesus poured the wine and the bread was broken, when everyone could eat, the outcast and the beloved, the arrogant and the gracious, the wrongdoer and the wrongly done by, then the table became a foretaste of love made real and of a world made whole. God's company at the table will include the betrayer and the beloved, the wrongdoer and the wrongly done by. It would not be God's table without them. And the promise is this, that when we are together, when we tell the story and give the blessing, when we break the bread and pour the wine, we will discover a foretaste of love made real and of a world made whole. So now, the Lord be with you, and also with you. Come to the mountain of the Lord. We come to see God's glory. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Almighty God, creator of all things in heaven and on earth. When the earth was formless and void, you brought light to the darkness and order to the primordial chaos. From mere clay, you fashioned us in your image and breathed into our lifeless bodies the breath of your life-giving spirit. When we wandered off and lost our way, you sent prophets and teachers to show us where we had gone astray. In the fullness of time, you sent your Son, Jesus Christ, to become living water and heavenly food for our very souls. Even at the moment of his darkest hour, when the forces of darkness conspired to end his life, and his disciples were about to fall away, Jesus offered himself as the bread of heaven and the cup of our salvation. And even when we fall away today, Christ continues to be for us the bread of heaven and our cup of salvation. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join in your unending hymn, saying together, Holy, 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 Lord God of Sabaoth, heaven and earth are full, are full of the majesty of thy glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. When you sent Christ to be with us, he offered his very self, that we might have the strength to stand when all hope seems lost. Through the holy mystery of this table, we are invited into your presence, tended to in our brokenness, and strengthened in our weakness. 
With joy and gratitude, we remember that night in which Jesus took the bread, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is the bread of life, given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, Jesus took the cup, blessed it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Drink from this, all of you. This is my life in a new covenant, poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts of love and grace, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as your covenant people, and doing so in union with Christ's Spirit and as reflections of your glory, together we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ has risen, Christ will come again. And so we ask, Lord, pour out your Holy Spirit on us, that we might be servants of others, even as Jesus was a servant to his own disciples and to those in need. Pour out your Holy Spirit on these gifts of bread and wine, that they may be for us the life and love of Christ, and that we may be for the world the body of Christ. Redeemed by your gracious love, by your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, one in ministry to the world. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. As often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. We eat and drink with thanksgiving, remembering all that Jesus has done for us. So friends, this, this is the body of Christ, broken for us. This is the cup of salvation. Now take and eat, take and drink. Let us join now in our prayer of thanksgiving. Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you for these gifts, reminders of your life and your sacrifice, given that we might have life. Amen. <clears throat> we come now to our service of Tenebrae. Tenebrae is a Latin word meaning shadows. <clears throat> there are many ways that we consider the shadows lengthening, growing, as Jesus approached his end. Tonight, we talk about Jesus walking the lonesome valley. This is the night of darkness before the world changed, not only for the disciples, but also for all of us. Jesus has offered the disciples a new covenant. He has blessed the bread and the cup, beginning the journey that would lead to the cross, saving us through his suffering. Judas Iscariot. Jesus went with his disciples across the Kidron Valley, where there was a garden, which he and his disciples entered. Jesus went off by himself to pray, asking the disciples to keep vigil with him, to stay awake by the fire. Although their spirits were willing, each time Jesus returned to them, he found them asleep. His hour was at hand. And as his trial begins, we go to the Garden of Gethsemane, after Jesus has been arrested by the Romans. And we hear from the apostle Judas Iscariot. I helped the Roman soldiers take Jesus away. I betrayed him with a kiss. They paid me 30 pieces of silver. I thought I was doing the right thing. I thought that Jesus would reveal himself as the Messiah when they came for him. I thought that he would strike down the Romans, freeing us from our oppression. 
I thought that he would reveal himself before Caiaphas, the chief priests, and the other high priests at his trial. He did none of these things. Even when Peter drew his sword and struck the high priest's slave, cutting off his right ear, Jesus told Peter to put away his sword. Then Jesus healed the slave's ear and was taken away. I have given our leader over to those who will punish him. How can I possibly return to my brothers, the other disciples? I have shared bread and wine with them for the last time. John, the son of Zebedee. Each of the disciples remembers a moment from Jesus' ministry, remembers the way he was changed by his words, his deeds. On this night, they too are left alone, and each of them wonders what will happen to him, what will happen next. Hear what his beloved disciple John remembers. Oh, the things that he taught us, the things that we heard. I remember Jesus calling people blessed. Blessed are the meek, he said. Blessed are the poor. Blessed are those who mourn. I was blessed. I was blessed from the moment he called me to be with him, and I never realized it. I was blessed as I saw him reach out to those who were hungry, those who were poor, those who were sick, and those who were oppressed. He came, bringing words of hope and joy to so many who needed it. I saw how their lives were changed by his words, how they were transformed before my eyes. Now I am one who is poor. Now I am one who mourns. Now I am one who hungers. Now I need to hear his words just once more. Where do I go from here? James, the son of Zebedee. How do you recall in one night all the ways that Jesus has touched your life? How do you recall in one night all the ways that Jesus touched the lives of others? So many wonders, so many miracles. Why did the son of a carpenter care for so many people? Let us hear from John's brother, the apostle James. Our journey was long, with many peaks and valleys. No matter where we went, Jesus' reputation went before us. There were times when he had to go to the top of a hill to speak to the crowds. Sometimes he had to get into a boat and go on to the lake for a little ways, so that he would not be overwhelmed. One evening, after he spoke to many and healed many, we continued our journey, and they followed. There were too many people to enter the town. They wouldn't have enough food for so many. We didn't have enough money to feed so many. We only had a few loaves and fishes, enough to feed ourselves. Jesus instructed us to break the bread and fishes and give it to the crowd. There were so many, too many for us to feed with the little we had. And yet, every person who reached into the basket pulled out bread or pulled out fish. There was enough for everyone and even some left over. I hunger to hear his voice once more, to sit and eat with him. I fear that I will never do either. Andrew, the brother of Simon Peter. As the night passed, each of the disciples is left alone with his thoughts for the first time since Jesus called each one by name. There is no joy on this night, only fear, regret, sorrow, and guilt. Although the disciples heard the words of Jesus, not until now did they begin to understand them. What does the Apostle Andrew remember of his time with Jesus? Our teacher, Jesus, met so many people along the way. He went to places where the Gentiles lived. I remember when he met the Syrophoenician woman. She asked him to heal her daughter. At first, he refused. She became angry. 
She challenged him, not for her sake, but on her daughter's behalf. She sought the one she knew could heal her daughter. Her faith led her to him. And after her challenge, Jesus healed her daughter and sent the woman on her way. On our journeys, we traveled to Samaria. Jesus sat down by the well, the one of our ancestor Jacob. We saw him speaking with a woman who had given him some water. She was so happy. We knew that Jesus had done something for her. He spoke to these women as if they were part of his community. Who will he embrace as family now? Will he ever return to us? Thaddeus, also called Jude or Judas. There was so much that Jesus shared. How could the disciples take it all in? This was the first night of what was to come. This was the beginning of the new way. On this night, they could not realize that their time of darkness would not last forever. Hear how Jesus' teachings stayed with the apostle Thaddeus. Oh, the stories that Jesus told us. Where could they have come from, if not from God? They were so full of wisdom, so full of lessons for us echoing the lessons given to Moses and spoken by the prophets Jeremiah and Isaiah. They were about the things we had forgotten, the things we stopped hearing from our priests. The time to change our ways had come. We heard how God seeks to bring the lost ones home, like sheep, coins, or a wayward child, and to welcome us with open arms. We learned how we need only to have a little faith, like a mustard seed, and the Lord would help it grow. We learned that goodness is in all people, even if, even if they are Samaritans. We learned that we must keep a vigil, expectantly waiting for God's return. But on this night, I forgot the message of those stories. When they came to arrest Jesus, I did not stand with him. And now I am lost. Who will come and find me? Matthew. Jesus performed miracles everywhere he went. Blind people were able to see. Deaf people were able to hear. The lame walked. Demons were cast out. Many sought out Jesus, not only for themselves, but for someone they loved. Matthew remembered and wrote down so much about Jesus. Let's hear from this apostle. <clears throat> the crowd seemed to grow each day. Yet somehow that woman reached Jesus and touched the bottom of his robe. He felt the power go out of him. <clears throat> we thought it was the masses of people pressing in on him. But then the woman identified herself. <clears throat> She came forward and thanked Jesus for healing her. She had been hemorrhaging for 12 years. She had faith to believe that Jesus alone would heal her. And though there were too many people separating her from him, she somehow was able to touch the hem of his robe and be completely healed. Even a Roman guard, a centurion, sought Jesus. The centurion spoke of Jesus' authority and recognized his power. He came and asked Jesus to heal his slave. Jesus spoke with him and healed him right then and there. His healing power touched so many. Some we knew by name. Others who were complete strangers. I wish I had his healing touch now, for I am sick in my heart. Thomas. This is the longest night of the disciples' lives. They have scattered like leaves on the wind. It is not known where they have gone. They fear for their lives. They don't want to be arrested. They don't want to testify before the Sanhedrin. They don't want to be brought before Pilate. They do not want to be with Jesus now. 
Those who witnessed his greatest miracles are unable to witness for him at his trial. The Apostle Thomas, yes, doubting Thomas, still had incredible faith in Jesus. And what does he remember? Word came to us that Lazarus, the brother of Martha and Mary, was ill. Although he warned Jesus that the Jews had sought to stone him and that he should not return just then, he decided to go anyway. And so we went with him, fearing for our lives, not knowing what punishment might lie ahead for us. We arrived too late. Martha came out of the village to meet us, to tell us that her brother was gone. Jesus then entered the village and went to Mary, and he wept. We thought he would stay and mourn with the family. We thought he would stand by them, offering what comfort he could. Instead, he said, take away the stone. He prayed to God, thanking the Lord for hearing him. And then he said, Lazarus, come out. And Lazarus did. I can still remember it like it was yesterday. Who will stand by Jesus now? Who will comfort him? Who will call Jesus out of the arms of those who arrested him? Philip. Jesus taught wherever he went. Time and again he returned to the temple, the center of his faith. It had become a place of iniquity. It was becoming a barrier to the repentance of the Israelites. It needed to be cleansed, as the people needed to be cleansed. The Apostle Philip saw it all. Let's listen to him. Day after day, we would listen to him in the temple. And we weren't the only ones there. He recalled the words of the prophets. He brought the law back to life, awakened the law that was in our hearts. He shared with us the words of God and the will of God. He talked of so many things. He brought the stories of our ancestors back to us. He brought the meaning of our covenantal relationship with God back to us. Some called him a great teacher. Others called him a prophet, like the prophets of old. He cleansed the temple of the money changers and all those who had brought, bought and sold there. He also cleansed our hearts, helping us to remember the Lord's covenant with Abraham, Moses, our deliverer, our greatest King David, the building of the first temple. He made the temple a dwelling place for the Lord. Where can we go now? For without Jesus, how can we return to the temple? Bartholomew, also called Nathaniel. As Jesus' popularity grew, some were not comfortable with the message he preached and the words he offered. They did not know what to do with this man. They did not know if they should support him. They were blind to what they saw, deaf to what they heard in his teachings, in his healings, and in his ministry. The Apostle Bartholomew saw how Jesus gained followers and enemies along the way. Let's hear his observations. Wherever we went, the chief priests and the scribes, they were there. Some questioned Jesus about the things he said. Some questioned him about the people he healed. Some questioned him about doing work on the Sabbath. Some questioned him about the authority by which he said the things he said and did the things he did. There were always questions. They seemed to be at every turn. I don't know why. Some watched him. Other, others watched those of us who followed him. Still others watched the people who came from everywhere, wanting to hear him, wanting to see him, wanting to be healed by him. A few counselors, like Joseph of Arimathea, spoke with him as with an equal, respected his wisdom, and called him rabbi. What questions are they asking him now? What answers do they expect to hear? 
<laughs> what answers will he give them? Why didn't I go with him to face the Pharisees and the Sadducees? What answers would I give them? James, the son of Alphaeus. Our expectations aren't always fulfilled. The hope of one day can fade quickly. Although the disciples were with Jesus, and they heard what he said, they were not given to understand it. They couldn't read the signs. They were too caught up in the present to see what would transpire in the future. The Apostle James saw how quickly things could change. Let's hear his story. How did it all happen? When did it all happen? Wasn't it just a few days that Jesus sent us to find a cult? Didn't we come into Jerusalem in the midst of cheers, songs, and laughter? Men, women, and children, they all came out to meet him upon the road, waving palms in the air. How the loud hosannas rang in the streets. They called him the son of King David. They called him the prophet of Nazareth and Galilee. He had changed the lives of so many people. People were healed. People were full of hope. We were full of hope. We felt our world was changing, that a new time was coming. The people were with us. The people were with Jesus. And now, no one is with him not even one of us. We have fled from his side, leaving him alone in his hour of need. What should I do? Where can I go? Simon the Zealot. As clarity comes, as the disciples begin to believe, they are left to deal with what they didn't do on this night. For a time, they will be overwhelmed by their regret, by their failure. But in time, they remember the significance of Jesus' life. They remember the significance of this night, of the Last Supper, of forgiveness. The Apostle Simon remembers all of this. Listen to him now. Tonight, Jesus spoke of so many things. He spoke of the promise of a kingdom to come. He spoke of a new covenant between our Lord and the people. He spoke of a new commandment of love. My head buzzes as I try to remember all the things he spoke of. Has it only been a few years since he called our names to follow him so that he could teach others a new way? He sent us out to share what we had learned, empowering us to speak to the hearts of others wherever we went. What did he say about the kingdom to come? It was about being born anew, about being born of the Spirit. We were to change our ways, to hear the message he shared, and to live it. He warned us to be ready, for no one knew, not even he, when this kingdom would arrive. He tried to prepare us for the suffering that would come. And on this night, he must suffer alone. For when they came to arrest him, I didn't have the courage to go with him. Peter. It is dawn. All of the disciples have scattered. They fear that they too will be arrested. They are sorrowful, for Jesus has been taken away. Is it possible he will be taken before the Romans? Is it possible that he'll be crucified? The disciples begin to be in their own valley of despair. They do not know what will happen to them. They have forgotten the words given to them in Jesus' teaching, in his preaching. They have forgotten the miracles he had performed. They have forgotten the love he has shared. On this night, they have lost themselves, although they have broken bread and drunk from the cup. The Apostle Peter, the rock, remembers some ups and downs. Listen to him now. 
Jesus called me the rock because when he asked me, who do you say I am? I answered, you are the Messiah. Tonight at dinner, after he washed our feet, when he said that one of us would betray him, I swore that I would not, could not do any such thing. I did, in fact, deny that I knew him, not once, not twice, but three times. And as he said, three times before the cock crowed, hmm, I am no rock. In my fear, I have denied the one I have given up everything to follow. In my ignorance, I have lost all he sought to teach us these past three years. I do not know where to go from here. I don't know what will happen. I have failed him. I have failed the other disciples. Oh, if only I could break bread and drink from the cup with him one more time. But wait, maybe I can. For he did say that each time we do it, we should do it in remembrance of him. And so I shall. And every time I do it, I will remember this night. I will remember what we have shared. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light has come into the world, but people love the shadows rather than the light. Amen. Friends, you've heard the story. Let it not be like the apostles where they heard and forgot, heard and still felt lost. For us, let us treasure these words, treasure what Jesus did for us. Let us not be filled with regret, guilt, or shame, but gratitude and the beginnings of hope that we will celebrate more fully on Easter. God bless, and see you soon.